Pretty amazing what two words mean in the motor racing world, simply saying Long Beach. It says it all, and we're celebrating 40 of them this year. It's both the 40th annual and the 40th anniversary. That, of course, doesn't usually happen, but because we missed the 2020 year, the year of the global pandemic, they both line up as we say good afternoon from Southern California. Lee Diffie, Townsend Bell, Dylan Welsh and Kevin Lee ready to roll here in this first IndyCar session of the weekend. T-Bell, this is your home state and it looks a picture today. It usually is like this in April and so glad that we get great conditions here at Long Beach once again. This place always special and I'll tell you the fans have really turned out today. It's a massive it crowd is, has yeah. come to enjoy uh, every category of racing. There's IMSA sports car racing this weekend. The jumpy trucks from Robbie Gordon will be hitting <laughs> the steel ramps later. And uh, nothing better than a cold, usually Mexican beer and uh, some horsepower on the streets of Long Beach. But IndyCar practice won a lot to sort out here for these drivers. And Kevin, from somebody who won their first race last year here at Long Beach to somebody who's making his very first IndyCar start this year and this weekend, Teo Porsche is in the Aero McLaren number six car. And just moments ago, he was stepping into this race car to make his very first laps in an IndyCar. And, and talked to him a little bit ago this afternoon. And he said, I've got about a couple hours on the simulator, the Chevy sim down in charlotte north carolina but that's it so it's going to be a lot of learning a lot of just trying to understand how to get this car out of the pits how to get it through the gears how to get it back in the pit box and and then they're going to kind of start figuring out uh what they need to do to this race car so it's going to be a lot of learning for the 2023 f2 champion now the good news about that is that He's got a teammate in Callum Eilat, who, of course, has been in this car the first couple of races this year, this exact car. Callum made the same tra same transition from F2 to IndyCar, so Teo's been, uh, Teo's been leaning on him quite a bit just to kind of get him up to speed and, and try and get him started off on the right foot. But once we get cars back on the racetrack here, I think it's going to be safe to expect this six car, Teo Porsche, on the racetrack a lot here in this first set. So one thing that's new this weekend, Dylan, is there is an updated version of one of the greatest safety enhancements we've seen in motorsports, and that's the aero screen. So rather than me try to explain what's different, one, it's a little bit lighter and there's more venting involved, but Ben Bretzman is the engineer for the Thirsty Threes for Scott McLaughlin and number three, Team Penske. So what is different about this aero screen and what is makes it uh, an advancement? Uh, well, there's two main advancements with this aero screen. Uh, first of all, from a you know, dorky engineering sense like myself, it, it's lighter. Uh, it's about four pounds lighter. Particularly very high in the race car, right? So you talk center of gravity and CG height. So you're taking a little bit of weight out of a very high position on the race car. So that adds performance. But the big thing for the drivers is there's now there's three cooling ducts on it. There's two on the top, which kind of look like almost eyebrows, and then there's one on the bottom that's kind of in the center of it. Both of those add additional cooling air to the drivers that they've, you know. And the more we can help them, it, it helps their performance level also, right? They're, they're athletes also. Um, they can run, Scott can run 160, 170 beats per minute for two hours, and it's a lot of work uh, in, the, in IndyCar, particularly at street courses like Long Beach. Um, so any more air we can give them to kind of help cool their bodies, their core temps is a, is a big advantage. It's going to be huge later in the season. Luckily, the weather is always perfect in Southern California. Townsend Bell has a question. I'll, I'll pass it along. Yeah, Go ahead, T-Bell. Yeah, Kevin, do the additional vents, as the team found, that that adds a lot of aero drag to the car? So do the additional vents add additional aero drag? Are you seeing the vents, the vents change anything as far as how you have to set up the car and how it performs? Uh, a little bit. Um, a little bit. It, it it's, you don't want to tell us, do you? Not too much, but there's a little bit of a little bit of a change, maybe with how how it works at the rear wing. Um, I think the, the teams are going to have to sort out uh, how they want to manage that. Um, IndyCar rules are saying that you pretty much can't close them, though, so it's pretty much the same for everybody. But there is a little bit of a, an effect on how it works at the rear wing. So um, I think ultimately the teams are going to have to figure out, you know, how do we manage it and what's the best way to kind of work around it. You are having your first lap with Teo Porsche. Uh, you're seeing what he's seeing for the very first time, other than the track walk yesterday and a little bit of sim work. Let's go for a ride with him.
What do you like that you see or hear? Patience with his right foot. Uh, I like that he's getting the wheel unwound straight before he leans into the power, just making sure he doesn't make a mistake mid-corner. You know, a tiny mistake ends the session for this kid. And the last thing you want right now is losing track time. You need every single lap of every second available in practice to just feel the ground, to understand where the heat points are on this racetrack, how the car's gonna bounce and ride. He's gonna come to the front straight away here, start really pulling through the gears. So remember, okay, last lap I break super early for turn one. So now methodically take it 100, 100 yards deeper. Let's see what he does right here. Still pretty conservative on the brakes. He could almost come to a stop before the turn in point there. And then the other thing is just feeling every one of these curbs, everyone's different. The fountain right there, the where the right front rides that curb. The way the bump is through turn five here. How about turn six off camber? He's probably never seen anything like the off camber that you see through that corner. And you don't know what you can get away with oftentimes until it's too late. And so that's the hard part about this is you're just tiptoeing. And to go fast at Long Beach, you got to be super you confident. Be you got to know exactly what the car is going to do before it gets there. Let's hope he makes the most and gets the most of the remaining 32 minutes on his exploratory laps, his first ever IndyCar session and NTT IndyCar Series weekend. He's a great addition to the Arrow McLaren squad. Here's a little bit of a bio on him just to bring you up to speed, but I can tell you there's a lot of interest in the Formula 1 and Formula 2, F2 and F3 paddock to see what this guy does because he is such a young rock star. A lot of respect for this young man in the open wheel world, what he's done at a very swift pace. And he, self-admittedly, loves IndyCar and has been a long-time fan of IndyCar for as long as you can be a long-time fan at 20. Um, but this is, ex this is equally as exciting for him as it is for us to have him in this series. Here is the defending race winner, Kyle Kirkwood. What happened? Oh, he's, he's going, going the back door. Going through the back door. And stopping. He didn't want to come all the way around the hairpin. There was something that needed to be addressed, Kevin Lee. I heard something about gearbox on the radio, and they have, uh, they're looking at the, the rear of the car now, so we'll try to get some more information, but that's the early guesstimate on the 27. Chevrolet, check out how close this is. Yeah, he Ooh, got it. Oh, he did scuff it. Looked like maybe twice exiting turn four. Once. A kiss. And a cuddle? No, uh, no cuddle. No I cuddle. Was, I think it was just a, a breath. Then in turn six, this is the second gear corner. You can see way wide at the exit there. Oh. And another little brush. A different paint scheme. Still got American Legion on it, but it's got it's a very different color scheme and there's something different on the side. It says Unfrosted, which is a new movie that Jerry Seinfeld uh, is behind and is the mastermind of. It's kind of a, an odd story. It's about Pop-Tarts. Um, and they're combining and collaborating with the American Legion and Chip Ganassi Racing. And you might be saying, well, what's, what's, the, what's the point of collaboration? How does it make sense? I spoke to Dean Kessel earlier today from the American Legion. He said, whose mission is to help prevent veteran suicide. What do, what do funny movies make you do? They make you laugh. Laughing helps mental health, keeps you in a better position. And so they thought that this was a really great fit. Jerry Seinfeld thought it was a really great fit. Uh, he loves cars. I don't know how much of a motorsport fan he is, but uh, he thought that this was terrific and liked the initiative, liked the idea of it. And well done to not only Jerry and all of his people, but to the American Legion and Chip Ganassi Racing. Yeah. Let's show you some replays. We've got a few of them to get you up to speed on. Here is the Verizon Chevy for Will Power. Bouncing and pogoing at the end of the back straight into turn nine, and he decides to just let it ease off into the runoff. Here's what it sounded like. There might be a little wall contact here. 
Is it little or is it significant? It was more than what Scott McLaughlin did. But he was able to get away with it. Here's Alexander Rossi. In the arrow, McLaren Chevy. Massive lockup down into turn one. What about this guy? Nolan Siegel, the teenager. The standout from Indy Next in the King Taco machine. Yes, he did thermal. That was a non-championship weekend. That was a, that was a demonstration. That was a money race. This officially is his first IndyCar weekend, right? On a points weekend. Well, and we've gone almost three in a row here. We started off with breakfast treats. We went to tortilla chips, and now we're on to tacos. I mean, this is this is a, a, a powerful influence on one's hunger to start an IndyCar practice. Everything look okay at tires. I've had a really bad vibration this run. We're looking. You got time for uh, this one and one more. So a very bad vibration on this run for uh, the young driver who's won a pole in a race here. Uh, we're just hearing that we've got a replay for you too of Kiffin Simpson into the back straight. A little right front lockup as oh. soon as he hits the bump there and takes the overshoot. So two 10-minute sessions. Rookies can participate in either. I heard something happened here. Oh, something happened. Something oh, sideways happened. Big catch. Turn five. This is that off-camber drop. That left rear just tends to fall down the hill if you ask too much at the exit. This is the place where he went at it with Scott Dixon. He dove down the inside right here on Scott Dixon. Went wheel to wheel. Dixon, he left Dixon in the tire bundle and took off. And that didn't please Scott Dixon any. Pato said, I didn't do anything wrong. They'll agree to disagree. We've yet to see a return matchup on that as he has his hands full here big time. I, we've seen Pato award more sideways in his IndyCar road and street circuit practice career than any driver in the last five years. I mean, the guy is always in yaw as we take a look back and a flashback to the moment you just referenced this turn eight. Putting the six-time champ into the ropes. And conveyor belt material or not, I think that's, uh, that was going to be a race ender for Dixon. Or in that case, certainly take the wing off. He did get back out, Scott Dixon, last oh, it year. Oh, it like ended Dixon up just clipped the wall maybe there. Finishing, and he ended up retiring early, a little bit later in the race. If cars were able to open things up by about a foot, See what Graham does. Yeah, he's way over the line. Let's go down to pit lane with an update from Dylan. Uh, he's ninth right now, but not exactly happy with the race car. This is radio moments ago. Yeah, I just screwed up last lap. Got a massive block into the pound. Yet again, just killed my lap. So they have been battling some brake problems this year. Graham said at St. Pete, he kind of had some issues with the brakes as well. They've tried to get those dialed in a little bit better. This track is a place where Graham comes in with some confidence. He raced really well here last year, started 24th and, and finished 12th. So uh, as their street course program continues to evolve, this is one where I think it's going to be a good gauge for us to see just how much work uh, has, has paid off in the offseason. Giving Will all the information that he needs. Hey, T. Bell, have a look at P4, the rookie, Rasmussen. Yeah, popped up just there at the end, the driver of the 20. Rookie Rasmussen, uh, still about six tenths off award, but for young driver, that's a big deal to be in the top five. Canapino also sneaking it in. And all the way back, Jack Harvey into the top 10 for Dale Coyne. Good work. Celebrated a birthday earlier this week, did Jacko? So that'll be nice to be running in the machine here on the streets of Long Beach. Turn nine, you see that violent bump in the front axle does not like it. Almost seemed like he just flat bottomed the car there. And if you get on the floor, it's almost impossible to avoid the big lock up there. Don't feel bad about that, Nolan. There have been dozens and dozens and dozens of drivers over the years to do exactly the same. That's a characteristic of the Long Beach street circuit. And this is going to be painful to watch. You can hear that reverse gear grinding much better. Yeah. Much better to try the, the flick and just drop the clutch, burn it out, and do a 180. Than 
the Austin Powers move here. Finding reverse in an Indy car is frustrating. He's Almost like, always. Now he's going to, oh, he just got the rear wing into the wall. He's taking his time. He's going about there it methodically. Go. Well done. Hey, that's pretty heads up for a teenager. Well done. A great character, great personality, and just happy to be here. Um, and, you know, he is on a rocket ship, either to Formula One or to IndyCar. Either way, he is going to be a, an open-wheel superstar. Here are the overall practice times from everything combined. It's Pato Award-leading fe fellow Chevrolet drivers, Will Power and Scott McLaughlin. Looks a lot like the finishing order at the first race in St. Pete with Pato Award and Team Penske there in the top five. Shout-out to Felix Rosenquist as well. Another strong performance early on in the season with his new race team. Further back, you see some of the drivers that are just learning Long Beach for the first time. And I agree on Teo Prescher. I mean, just 20 years old. What he accomplished to just keep it off the walls at Long Beach, your very first time in an Indy car, that's something special. You've got Lundquist, Perucci, lots of drivers that'll be looking for more as we get to practice two and then into qualifying at Long Beach, 180 miles an hour on shoreline it never gets old